and welcome to Harvest International Ministry. My name is Donna Coley. Been here a couple of times and I get to do this again, so I'm really, really excited. So appreciate y'all coming out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Even though I have been known to be able to talk to walls by myself, so, uh, but I like having faces, so I appreciate that. Uh, the title of my message today is Come Alive. And I've had this message in me for about, I want to say about two years, but I've not known how to develop it beyond what the, the, the initial part. So I got it, finally got it. So thank you, God. I believe this is from you. So we're going to do our first slide. <clears throat> Technically, second slide. The passage is coming from Ezekiel 37.10. It's a very long passage here, and you guys have probably remember this story. It's the hand of the Lord was on me. So Ezekiel, God is... Uh, God has taken Ezekiel and he's talking to him. So he's one of the Old Testament prophets. The hand of the Lord as it was on me, and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, Son of man, can these bones come alive? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, and there was no breath in them. Then he said, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the Lord, sovereign Lord says, come, breathe from the, sorry, come, breath from the four winds of, and breathe into these, these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as I, he commanded me, and breath entered them, and they came to life, and they stood on their feet, a vast army. When I was a kid, there was a song, and if I had remembered to do that, I would have pulled it up a little bit. But it was, um, we all know the little song about the knee bone attached to the ankle bone and stuff like that, so that song was cute. But this was a, man, this was a song on the Country Western Station about, um, uh, the, about that, and, but it was about this verse here, and for some reason, my dad was able to explain, you know, he told me about this was came out of the Bible. And so in my head, I'm thinking, here are all these dead people that got bone and skin on them, and they're walking around, and who are they? Are they still alive? You know, what, are they going to die again? So this is that little six-year-old head running wild and crazy. And then you have to go back and remember this was a vision that God gave to Ezekiel. And then God is really good about visions because when he gives them to you, he also goes in to explain them on the next slide. He's, God says, then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy, to say, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people are going to open their graves. Uh, no, they're not. My people, comma, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle in you I will settle you in your own land then you will know that I the Lord have spoken and I have done it declares the Lord so these bones what what God was explaining to Ezekiel was that I'm going to have Israel be able to come back alive again because they're saying our bones are dried up. And I don't know if you've ever been in that position where you felt like that you just had nothing left to give and you had, I mean, you just existed. That's how these, the Israelites were feeling. But you know what? Sometimes today we even feel that way. So here's a promise from God on the next slide, John 10, nine through 10. And Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And I came that I may have life. Nope, 
I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So God, uh, Jesus came for one purpose. Ultimately, lots of purposes, but in the end, it comes out that we get li abundant life. And in that abundant life, we have to remember who the enemy is. And the enemy is that thief who comes only to do three things. He comes to steal and kill and destroy. That's his job. So in the midst of our abundant life, guess who's going to be around? There we go. Next slide. This is what I thought abundant life was. I thought abundant life was like this. I had, I mean, I was a Christian. I read my Bible. I sang my songs and faked the dance because, you know, you know I just ain't got no rhythm here, but, you know, so I can fake that dance. Um, but I was a Christian. I was going to church on a regular basis. I was working at the church, not for pay, but volunteering at the church. And I was teaching the kids. I was teaching the adults. There's different churches I went to, and I had the ability to, uh, to be able to teach. So I wasn't just a sit on the pew type Christian. I was doing stuff. And this is what I thought abundant life was. I had no struggles except for the ones that I created. And I don't know if y'all know this about me, but I can create a few messes in my own life. Life was as I willed, where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. I was just like those dry bones that Ezekiel prophesied over. They were joined together with tendons and skin, but had no life. I'm a walking, talking, breathing human being, and I'm walking around, I'm laughing and giggling and cutting up, and I'm crying and having temper tantrums and all this other kind of stuff that human beings have, and, but I have no life because I had created what I thought was abundant life. I volunteered a lot and with the motive that I would be seen as indispensable. Look, I can do this, and I can do this over here, and I can do this, and y'all just can't do without me. So I am needed. I'm worthy of this job, of this title, and that's what I was uh, striving for in all the volunteer jobs I did because I wanted to look at me I'm right here and I'm great and I'm wonderful and you can't live without me and this is what I'm this is where I lived for a long time when no promotion came I found something else to do or somewhere else to go because you know oh well then that's not where God wants me to be you know that Christianese talk well since God doesn't want me over there let me go over here because I can be really just as useful over there they just don't know the talent when they see it in reality I had no substance and I didn't know who I was in my head I was this great and mighty person who had all the answers Lizzie this is your cue to laugh and in my head I was the great problem solver. But what we made it really, really bad is that there was no problems to solve and there definitely was no questions to be answered. So I, I, that's what abundant life was for me. I had all the answers and that was me. Thank you, God. So that little maze right there, that was me wandering around in that maze. And, and I knew how to get out. But I was just wandering around because, you know, if I'm doing that, then I'm taking up all the opportunities that God has for me. So I'm taking advantage of this. So I'm not lost. I'm, I'm finding the path that God has for me. That was the abundant life I was living. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, God. On the next slide, let's see. Yeah, oh, there it goes. <clears throat> this, is what the, this is what I found out abundant life was. And in all reality... I didn't really know who I was until I met the Whites. And Pastor Ronaldo White and Jennifer White, they have this amazing ability to tell you what reality is without hurting you too badly <clears throat> as, you, as you get to be, stay with them and grow with them, then the, they get more blunt. <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> And um, so until I met them, I didn't know who I was. So because of them, I, this, is, this is the result of them. This is their fault. No, 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 no. I'm just messing around. 
Um, but what they have done is they opened my eyes up that you, uh, I was really had no answers. And that nobody, nobody needed me so badly that I was indispensable. No, I was never like that. I was needed, and yes, I was available, so let Donna do it. You know, because Donna will do, you know, Donna will do that. Just, just let her do it. So, great and mighty Donna, come over here. And, but anybody could have done that. Anybody could have done those jobs. So, abundant life to me, this is what abundant life is, looks like for me right now. My family ties are getting stronger. I'm going to tell you more about that in just a minute. I have great and amazing friends. I have more friends and stronger relationships than I've ever had in my life. And even with my family, I have that. I'm a senior in college. <laughs> I'm a double senior. <laughs> that was funny. Y'all can laugh about that one, too. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, and, that, and because of that, I have the ability to learn. This is my fifth year in college because I had the two minor degrees I got. So I'm a little bit longer. So this is my, my fifth year of consecutive working in college and getting this degree. And I've learned, I found out that I, I can learn. I never knew that I could learn like this before. I still have a lot of understanding, but I can't verbalize what's up here now. <laughs> I'm having troubles with that part. Uh, my abundant life includes travel. I get to go places that are amazing sights I get to see. I get to, uh, not only do I get to help drive, but I'm a driver. I get called upon, hey, Donna, we need you to drive. Yes, road trip, road trip. Any, any excuse to hit that road. Um, side note, we were going to the last cruise, and for weeks I have been feeling out of sorts and just not quite myself. I've been kind of tired and dragging a little bit. And um, so it was my... I told Erica, I said, right now I just really need to drive, so let me be the first driver. You know, she and I were going to exchange driving, uh, ex uh, drive together. And the first hour, finally, whew, I was starting to feel better. The second hour, I was back to myself. We stopped for a break. I said, Erica, if you don't mind, I need to finish driving. I mean, let, let me drive for another session. Before I knew it, it was nine and a half hours straight driving, <laughs> and I felt human again. And so next time I start feeling not so human, I'm going to take a road trip, even if I have to go by myself, and just go to Chattanooga and turn around and come back. So now I know what my problem is. I need to drive. So I can do that. People, there's a lot of folks my age, I'm finding out that uh, they can't see at night when they drive. So their driving is limited. I can drive all night long all night long and it's, it's so cool anyway I've got I've got health and I've got strong bones I'm gonna tell you about two of my friends that I work with right now they have what's called long COVID they had good health very good health until they got COVID and since they got COVID they have what's called long COVID and their joints and muscles ache they have these weird symptoms that pop up suddenly. They have um, not so much breathing issues, but they just don't have the health that they had before they got COVID. So there's the, the doctors are still finding out what long COVID is doing to people, and this is one of them. And I met two that have this. And I just thank God that, that I've got my health. I can do these things. So I'm running as fast as I can and as hard as I can because when is that going to happen? Is that going to happen to me? If it does, I've got the experience now. I can say when. But in the meantime, it's now, and I'm living that life. My, um, the strong bones. Uh, I think everybody in here has heard the story about me running, falling off that ATV and flipped that thing, and I told him, I said, yeah, but I left it on its belly, and one of the young men that was with us said, no, Ms. Donna, it let you win. <laughs> and then in reality, that's the truth, because when I landed, I landed on my palm of my hand. My palm of my hand was bruised for two days. I hit it that hard. I did not break my wrist. I didn't break the bones in my hand. You know, the bones in your hand is very fragile. I didn't break that. 
I hit my knee and it was bruised. It's still very bruised, which is crazy because I, I must have hit a rock or something. And it bruised from the top of my knee to just below where I, I sliced it open. I didn't break my kneecap. I didn't break the kneecap. And I was, thank God. I was so thankful to God because he's the one who created my bones. And because of him, he allowed no, no bones to break. And I just so, so thankful for that. Um, this is also pointed out that I have the ability to heal quickly. Within a week, you know, I like battle scars. Um, but after two days, my elbow only had scabs on it. There was no battle scar on it. And now you can't even tell I scraped it all up. It was all bleeding and everything. The only thing I have left on my knee is it's an invisible bruise, but, it's, but you can't see it. It's that little tiny scab, and it's not even a half an inch anymore. And I'm thinking, golly, I mean, pretty soon that's going to be gone, and it's just going to be a memory when that happened. But I'm healing quickly. Did I tell you all I'm 63 years old? And I'm thankful that I get to heal like this. I get to work and play at hard. I get to work hard and go play hard. I get to do that. I got to do the zip line and screamed and hung on to that thing so much. I screamed at every platform. What do we do? 24, 25, 22, 24 platforms. And my stomach, every time I got up there, my stomach was about to drop out. But it, I needed that. That was such a huge rush. I loved it. Not roller coasters. I will do a zip line. I get to do these things. I get the ability to have this abundant life. Now this is life, and not only do I get to do these little things like this, this is, this is nothing, but on the inside, I'm not the same person that I was when I first got here. I don't have the same mentality. Still dingbat sometimes, but you know, that's, I don't know if that's ever gonna heal itself. I don't know <laughs> correct itself, I should say. But I have the ability to learn and the willingness to learn. So that's part of that abundant life. But on the next slide, the thief, but God. So when you are living the abundant life, the thief is going to be, I had, the enemy was not there in the past because all the stuff that happened to me happened because of my choice, my decision, my lack, my whatever. It was me, me, me. Me, myself, and I, we had our own little thing going on over here. And so there was no enemy about it. There was no enemy. It was just me doing it. But when we live in this abundant life, but God. We went to a leadership conference, I think it was May? May. We went to this leadership conference, T.D. Jakes, in Orlando. His conf it was a huge conference. It was uh, mostly business. The, the breakout sessions were business-oriented, but they would have the group, and it was praise and worship. And speakers coming to speak life into us about the, from the Word of God. And it was really, really amazing. And at the very last session, the last day, it was supposed to be like maybe a two-hour session. I think it lasted four hours. T.D. Jakes and his wife, and I cannot remember her name. What's her name? I can't remember. Anyway, Sarita. Sarita. They sat on the platform and talked about marriage. Now, they never said these words. They never said these words, but this is what I got out of that four-hour session. Donna, the relationship with your husband is as much fault as yours as it is with him. And I believe that that's what God was telling me. They never said that from the pulpit. They never, or from that stage, they never said that. But that what I got out of it, I believe that's what God was saying. So when I did that, after apologizing to my husband, because I did say some harsh things about at least two weeks before we go, because, you know, I'm a holy person. I know the stuff that comes out, but, you know, the devil made me do it. So, um, so after I apologized to Steve, for those words that I said, we diligently made effort to work on our marriage, both of us, same effort. We worked together on this. 
we still get on each other's nerves, but now we can work it out, and instead of building on that hurt or that misunderstanding, we work out the issues. And we've never done that before. So that's, so that's part of the abundant life. The rich, being, a marriage being restored. A marriage being restored. Abundant life. Now enters the thief. That's the enemy. Who's mad because of our decision to work on this marriage. Now, God did not tell me this. This is just what I figure. This is what my, my head, how my head's reasoning things out. The ATV fall, now that was all my fault. That was, I got on that thing, I chose to ride that thing, not knowing how to drive that thing, and still drove it. That was my fault. But I didn't get any broken bones from that. I didn't get any infections. Now, I did go to the doctor because my knee was oozing so badly. There was so, it was oozing out so much that it looked like it was infected. I've had a lot of infections before, so I know what it looks like. And it wasn't just clear. It was colors in it, and I needed to go get this thing checked out. So when I went to the doctor, she just barely looked at it. She said, Psh, that's not infected. You're fine. You're fine. $92 to tell her that I was fine. But... <laughs> that was quite funny, $92. But the thing is, is that I was fine. God made sure of that. Now, Steve, last, last Sunday, it was Sunday, last Sunday, he wakes me up. I'm sleeping sound because you all know we have services on Saturday, he has, and then he has services on Sunday. He wakes me up out of sound sleep. Donna, I got to go to the hospital. What's wrong? Well, I've got some issues here. He had a little bit of blood in his urine. I thought, oh my gosh, that is not good. I know what that is. At the very least, it's this type of infection. And at the very worst, it's going to be kidneys or bladder or something. It's going to be really, really bad. And so I go to the hospital with him. And the doctor comes back. They take blood. They take urine sample. They take CT scan and everything else. And he comes back and he says, you have a very severe bladder infection. We're going to prescribe this broad spectrum antibiotic. We're going to do a culture on it. We're going to find out what's going on. He says, I need you to go and do a follow-up appointment with your primary doctor. So Steve does that. He gets to the primary doctor and this is God. There's no infection. None. No infection. God healed this man again. If you haven't heard the first story, in 2019, he was on full, complete life support with ECMO. And my understanding at that time when they, when they, when they first put him on ECMO, uh, there was other patients, uh, families in the waiting room that said, oh, they're not going to come off ECMO. They're talking about their family member. And as I was hearing more and more, I found out that people that go on ECMO generally do not come off ECMO at all. Now, it's a, it's a short word for this big old long thing. And basically what it is is tubes that are about this big around and one goes inside one each side of your groin and one comes out the other side and it filters your blood. It's a big giant machine that filters your blood. And this machine stands almost as tall as I am as, and wider than I am. It's a huge machine. Complete life support. Nothing in his body was functioning. And God healed him. He even died twice that I know of. At least two, twice that I know of. And I was there both times. And God healed him of that. And he healed him of this bladder infection. Again, healed him. But God. The thief comes, but God. He's there. That's abundant life. That's abundant life. And then Elizabeth, on Monday morning... Or Monday afternoon, I come here, I get off of work, I come here, I'm going to help out Lizzie with the garden, whatever she's doing out here. And I get this phone call, when are you coming home? Well, I'll be home about an hour, an hour and a half. You need to come home now. Elizabeth was in a wreck. Is she okay? She's fine. Nothing's wrong, but the car's messed up and i got to go pick up my car. Okay, that's not enough information. And so mama's brain kicks in, oh my gosh, my kid, my kid, my kid. Now, my kid's 31 years old, but I still don't stop worrying about her because she's my kid. So I get home, and I pull in that driveway, and oh, my gosh. The rear end of her car has no bumper. I'm pulling up, and the side of her 
I think they call them quarter panels now. That we called them fenders then, but they're called something different now. Was all scrunched up and crinkled and crumbled. And the other side had folds in it. And I thought, my kid was in that rack. So I get into the house and I find him, I'm getting the story. And the story is, is that Elizabeth find for once in her life in a wreck, she's completely innocent. Thank you, God, for that. Now, the other thing is, is that she's pulling out. She's got the green light. She's pulling out. And this three-quarter ton pickup truck pulling a fifth wheel slams into her rear end. I've known people that have spent weeks in hospitals because of a wreck like that. I've known people that died in wrecks like that. My kid walks away. That's the abundant life. She walked away. Now, of course, she may be shaking a little bit, you know. <laughs> She's a little steady on her feet. <laughs> but she walks away. Thank you, God. I still got my kid. I still got my kid. I still got my husband. I still got my life. I've got all my bones. That's the abundant life, folks. That's it. Now, on the next slide, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That's Matthew 6, 33. Well, what are the things that he says about? Well, that I had to go back and re to remind myself that Jesus is still referring to simple little things, the food, the drink, and the clothing. Because the people were so worried about, what am I going to wear? What am I going to drink? What am I going to eat? Um, that's Donna. When's dinner? When are we going to eat? Yeah, well, we're going to take a shower. <laughs> Sorry, Lizzie. <laughs> still, still apologizing to Lizzie for that. <laughs> um, we got stuck in a, in a hewned out canoe. It was pretty long. And got stuck on a river in Panama, the country, the Republic of Panama. So we're in this hewn out canoe in, on a river in the middle of a thunderstorm. Lightning and thundering popping. And Lizzie's hollering, God, I'm sorry. What did I do? God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God. And it wasn't her. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> because we were going someplace, and all I wanted to do was take a shower. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you, God, for the shower, Lizzie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I don't complain. When are we going to eat? But sometimes it does fall out of my mouth. And I say, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nobody else is eating. If I can trust God, if I, me, Donna Coley, if I can trust God with my basic needs, my food, my drink, and my clothing, if I can trust God with those three things, then I am able to trust God for the things that he has planned for me. Therefore, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. That's what God has for me. That's his plan for me. Well, if it's my, his plan for me, guess what? Because it's in the Bible, guess who else is it? It's y'all's plan. God has that planned out for you, not to give you plans for welfare. If you are well, you got welfare. You are good. Nothing's wrong with you. He's looking out for your best interest, not for calamity. Y'all know what calamity is. I always think of that little, when I was a kid, it was Calamity Jane was the, the, the little cowgirl, and she had a rifle and stuff. She was horseback and crazy stuff. But calamity is disaster coming upon you. There's another verse, and I meant to pull that up, and I, and I just now remembered it. Um, and I'm going to butcher it up, but in essence, Donna's version of what this verse is, is that a thousand is going to fall at one hand and a, a ten thousand at the other hand. That's calamity. That's abundant life in the midst of a calamity. So me walking away from the ATV, Eliz well, I limped. Elizabeth walking away from the, the wreck. Steve being healed twice. That is abundant life. The enemy comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But God. 
but God. So God's plan allows me to live the abundant life. That's his plan because he says it in his word. And even though it's Old Testament, guess what? It's still alive and well today. So God's plan is abundant life. That's his plan for us. On the next slide. Now, what happens when things go really, really wrong? Like with Paul. Y'all remember Paul, right? He was left for dead multitudes of time. He was shipwrecked at least twice and spent a day and a night on the ocean. He was stoned. He went without food. He was, I, was, I put the word hungry on my notes, but it was more than just hungry. He didn't have any food. And we went on a four-day fast, and I, that was, whew. Thank you, God, it was over with. And when I thought I could eat, it was another four more hours because I planned it. I planned it. Two o'clock, I get to eat, and we're going to have this great food. We're going to go to 1.30, and by the time the food gets on the, on the table, it's going to be ready, and I'm going to just pig out. And I had to wait four more hours. <laughs> God's sense of humor. Donna, I got you. <laughs> so he was... Without food, I have no idea. Well, if you're in a day and a night on the ocean, there's, you don't have, uh, excuse me, server, I need my food over here. Well, there's none of that. There's none of that. If you're left for dead, there's no food there for you. When he got, got resurrected by God and walks up, you know, what's he going to do? Go find the nearest restaurant? I don't know. I doubt it. Paul was imprisoned for preaching the word of God. For ministering to people, he was put in prison for that. So with this, this is his response. For me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 1.21. So in the midst of the devil, the thief, the enemy, whatever you want to call this enemy that is ours, he has three purposes to come to steal, kill, and destroy, but God, and then we choose to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's the abundant life. And then he says, so we're going to be like Paul. To be like Paul. Now, how do we, on the next slide, how do we do this? How do we get that abundant life? The biggest thing you have to do is make a choice. I choose the abundant life. I choose it. So here is me making that choice that I have chosen the abundant life because look what I get to do. Look what I've done. Look at where I have come from. I have people at work that say, Donna, you work. I, I am a contract, um, a temp hire at my job. It's, the job is supposed to end in October, so it's a six-month temporary job. And so right now what I'm doing is I'm helping file, I'm helping organize, I'm helping get people ready for a move. Um, next week when I go back to work, I get to go work in shipping and help them to work and get, so he can own that place. He hasn't been on that job very long, or maybe long enough, but he, we, he needs to make it his own space so he can work things out, uh, get, the, get the shipping out quicker. So I get to do these things, but it's my choice to have that abundant life. I get that choice. I have no idea where that story was supposed to go, so I'm just going to drop it and go on to the next slide. Sorry about that. So how do we get, begin this abundant life? Well, God gave it to us when he, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Okay, when you have eternal life, do you want that miserable life or, in, and living forever? Or do you want that abundant life? I choose abundance. It's a choice. So first of all, it was given to us. God gave it to us through Jesus. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice so that we can have that abundant life. If we're not living the abundant life, then we're spitting in Jesus' face because he died. He went through brutal pain, excruciating mental, emotional, and physical pain, and ended up dying from this. He got separated from his father. He'd never been separated from him. And so we choose because God gave Jesus. So we choose that abundant life. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth he confessed, resulting in salvation. So this is how we get saved, right there. 
right there, our words and our actions. Romans 12, 12, uh, 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God with... Oh, I didn't capitalize that G. I am so sorry. And I got squirreled by that one little thing. <laughs> sorry about that. A living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So God's will, his plan is perfect for us. It's perfect. So in that sense, we, that's how we get this abundant life that we're talking about. These three verses right here is only a start, and these are not the only verses. There are so many parts of the word of God. So our choice is, do we want that abundant life or not? Are you content where you are? I discovered that I'm not content. I'm, I, I never was content to begin with, but now that I'm experiencing things, I'm not content. We just got back from a cruise, and I'm already planning my next cruise. I want to take a trans-Pacific cruise, 18 days. And hitting all those little islands in the Pacific. You get on the ship in, in Hawaii, somewhere in Hawaii. So that's, that's a plane ticket there. Then you get from the ship. That's another plane. That's another ship ticket right there. And you 18 days. Honey, I'm getting a balcony. And I'm going to have those windows open. And yes, I will have the money to do all that. Because when I get on those islands, I need money to spend to buy presents. And to buy me presents and to do the excursions. No eight more ATVs. If I go on one, I will ride with somebody. So who's with me to go to that Trans-Pacific? Anybody? Any takers? Okay, Lamar, come on. <laughs> Lamar, we'll find something for you to do on that ship. I'm sure that there's plenty to do for little kids on that ship. <laughs> okay. So th it's a choice. It's a choice. And now I'm going back to the point that I forgot because I remembered it, and that was an important point. At work, I was telling you that I'm doing these things, and because sometimes I do my work so quickly, I, I, some of the jobs only take five minutes, and some only take two hours. And I'll come back and I'll say, what else do you have for me? And I've got two of them that said, Donna, slow down. You're working too fast. And my response to them is, if you knew where I came from, if you knew what I used to be like, you would understand why I cannot slow down. When will I have to slow down? I have no idea, but in the meantime, I'm taking advantage of every opportunity I have. Every opportunity. I came yesterday. I'm telling you these stories because not to be bragging on me, but I'm telling you what the, I get to do. These are things I get to do. I came here yesterday after work. It was, somebody told me the index, heat index was like 105 or something like that. I don't know if that's true or not, but I was out there in that garden and I thought, I got to get this one more row. If I can just get finish this row today, I got half of it done. And I am literally have sweat falling, I mean, like somebody poured water on me, falling off of me. I made about three trips from the, from the, that third row up to the, rabbits so they can have that fresh grass because you know rabbits like grass and so I gave them some grass and they really liked it of course they ate it they, so by the time I did the second one down they were halfway done with the first one I thought oh y'all hungry um, but I couldn't do that any longer I had to stop I got halfway done I had to stop and I was so thankful that I got to do that because there's people I know that can't do that. Granted, I shouldn't have been out there in the middle of the afternoon. I got off at 4.30, something like that. So it was late. It was late in the afternoon, but it's still the heat. But I got to do that. It's things I get to do. I hate to clean, but I get to clean this church. That's the abundant life. I get to do these things that I don't want to do. I hate to clean. I don't want to do that. But... I get to. I, so what I'm saying for you guys is I hope you're understanding that this is just not for me. 
This is for y'all too. This is for all of us. This is for all of us. So that abundant life is ours. It was given to us. That's the great thing. And it's just for us, for our, it's here for our taking. So I'm taking, I'm taking, I'm taking, I'm taking. I'm gonna be selfish like that. It's mine, 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 mine. But because I get abundant life, guess what? Does, does my life now have an effect on people? Am I have become, I'm not indispensable, but I'm needed. I'm greatly need because of the things that I do now, because I have that abundant life. Now the things that I do make, have a purpose, not just for me trying to find glory, not for me to find that title, that great, wonderful title, but because now somebody else can do what they're supposed to do. They're called to do something else because I stepped in and I took that pressure off of them. Granted, the pressure I take off is only this amount to compare to how much they've got, but I took that amount off because I'm living the abundant life. So Father, I just thank you, God, for this opportunity. I thank you, God, for, the, for this audience, for, this, for YouTube, for this audience here in the congregation to be able to listen. Father, I believe that this word came from you. Uh, Father, I pray and I thank you for that word. I uh, pray that you will just interrupt our days as we go on and show the ones who are want this abundant life, speak to their hearts and speak to their minds. In Jesus' name, amen.